Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all excellent. We're taking a look at the Strymon Dig today. I was definitely late to the party on this one. I didn't know too much about it. And then I saw one pop up for sale locally. And because it's a really nice kind of purpley mauve pink, I was like, you know what? I don't own any Strymon pedals. I should probably own a Strymon. And if I'm going to own one, it better be a delay pedal. And I didn't realize that it actually seeks to emulate vintage rack delays, which is another thing that I really like, rack gear. So it quickly became a no-brainer for me to pick one up and try it out, and here we are. I'm gonna run you through the functions of the pedal, pull some tones, but first, let's just hear the tone with the delay bypass. <laughs> Alrighty, let's start with the controls. We have three delay modes, basically a hi-fi delay mode, the 24 slash 96. There is ADM, which is like a very lo-fi digital style delay. And there's 12 bit, let's just hear those. So I really, really like the way that 12-bit mode sounds in there. Then we can add modulation. We can have light or deep or none. So it kind of does what it says on the tin there. I love the deep modulation and the 12-bit mode together. What's really cool about this pedal though is time one, which you can either adjust with the time knob or set to be a subdivision of the tap tempo. It's currently set up for a quarter note delay. Basically, it's gonna kind of act as your master delay time. Now it doesn't have to do this. You can kind of get in there and use one of the advanced functions and basically have these as two totally independent times. But what's really cool is you set the subdivision for this delay and then with time two, you can set it to be a different rhythmic subdivision and it's going to adjust the number of delay repeats so that they fade out in the same way, which I think is super awesome. If you've seen my series on how I dial in delay, normally on dual delay lines that have independent feedback controls, you have to kind of, you know, basically dial it in and set one a bit higher. This is automatically doing it for you and you can bring in that second delay with a mix control. And there are all the classic kind of subdivisions you would expect. There's a dotted eighth note, which we'll hear first. There's an eighth note triplet, an eighth note, a dotted quarter note, and there is a golden ratio, which is really cool for those washy ambient delays. But let's hear probably the most widely used and definitely the most famous rhythmic delay effect, this quarter note and dotted eighth note effect together. <laughs>
I love it. That's so nice. Of course, I'm kind of going pretty heavy with the mix here. You can just dial down the mix control if you want a more subtle effect, and you can use the time knob if you want to quick adjust things. For example, let's go back to that kind of golden ratio thing and we'll go for like a quick slap back with slightly less mix. <laughs> Very, very nice stuff. Or you can do the really, really long delays with lots of repeats in there. And uh, this golden ratio setting, like I said, is really, really sweet. <laughs> It's lush, I love it. But for me, when I'm mostly using delay, I'm using a whole bunch of distortion. So I wanna show you how I would go about basically dialing in a delay with this pedal and using some of the advanced functions that are lurking underneath the hood. Let me grab my PRS single cut and let me dial in a whole lot more gain. <laughs> Lots more gain. Let's do this. We're going to access two extra functions that are kind of hidden below the surface of the dig. I have to kind of awkwardly turn this way. I'm going to hold down both foot switches and using the mix two control, if I turn that all the way left, I've got series operation for the dual delay. If you go to the middle, I can get ping pong delays. And while I'm doing this, I can also turn this knob here, if I turn it to the left. It is going to low pass the delays and make them sound a little bit darker. I'm just going to set the mixes back to the middle. I have the deep modulation on and I'm on the 12 bit mode for the delay. Let's hear what this sounds like blended in with my filthy signal. <laughs> I love the way the delay kind of swims around the main signal. There's a little bit of a ducking effect. There's also the low pass on the delay, so they make it a bit darker, and they generally don't interfere with your main signal in the way a digital delay usually would. If I hold both foot switches down and I turn it all the way to the left, now the two delays are going to operate in parallel in stereo and not interact. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> So it kind of does that like Steve Vai, David Lee Roth era, Eat and Smile delay, or it does the kind of George Lynch dock and delay thing in there, which I'm a big fan of. If we just have a listen to the other two modes, let's hear the ADM mode. <laughs> So that one's kind of getting a bit crusty. I don't know how appropriate that is for a kind of lead sound like this, but if we go to the 2496 mode, we've basically got a really nice hi-fi delay with a slight ducking effect, kind of kind of 2290-ish. I know it doesn't sound like a 2290. There's a bunch of other stuff that does, but uh, this one's really enjoyable as well. <laughs> The 12 bit mode just does it for me though. I'm gonna play a little bit more with this one. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
wonderful stuff. So that's kind of how I would actually use this pedal. You can see there I've got it on the dotted eighth note subdivision for delay number two. If I go to that golden ratio though, that's pretty nice as well. And I'll kind of tap in a maybe a little bit of a quicker tempo in there just to give it a little bit more of a like thickening effect. And we've got that deep modulation on there, which is gonna make it sound a bit wider too. I might even tap that in a bit faster. Let's try that. <laughs> Of course, if you turn the delay time right down, you're gonna get a kind of faux chorus or flanger style effect. <laughs> Probably overkill there with the mix, but uh, you know, I'm just demonstrating what it does and it is a whole lot of fun as well. So that's the Strymon Dig. Like I said, I bought this used. I think it's a keeper. I really like the way it sounds. I really like the simplistic interface and how I can get those kind of like 80s rhythmic delays with modulation really easily and how I can do this kind of, you know, uh, over the top hairspray, super saturated distortion with that halo of delay swimming around it thing. Man, I am just full of the adjectives today, aren't I? Uh, apologize about that if you've just woken up and you're hearing an Australian mispronounce words and uh, just talk too much about things that they like. But I do really like this. I guess, as with all Strymon stuff, you know, the only knock on it is that it's expensive, especially here in Australia, but uh, it's worth paying for because it's good, you know, in my opinion. It's like it's actually money well spent. It's not like money well spent on something that's kind of built poorly or doesn't sound good. It's built amazingly well. It sounds great. Uh, there's a reason Strymon have their amazing reputation. And uh, I'm going to keep this pedal because I really like the way it sounds. What did you think of the dig? Did you like the tones I got out of it? Do you have one of these? How do you use it? What am I missing out on? And what can I still learn about this pedal? Because I've only just got it. Let me know in the comments. And until I see you guys next time, stay safe. Be excellent to one another, all right? Cheers.